Good Wednesday morning. It's December 30th, 2020. I'm Guy McPherson of GuyMcPherson.com, otherwise known as Nature Bats Last. I would encourage you to go to GuyMcPherson.com when you see this video because you will find there from today, December 30th, 2020, an article under the headline Science Update. And the article is found in the Indian Express and is called 2020 in Climate. As the world took the pandemic heat, global warming only became worse. It's a nice overview, to the extent any of this happening is nice, it's a nice overview of climate change and where we are at this point. This article was updated just yesterday, by the way, in the Indian Express. It starts off with the first photo and the caption associated with it, where it points out that deadly wildfires in California more than doubled the previous record for the most land burned in a single year in the state of California, which is enormous. And then paragraph one, climate change impacts can be seen in some extreme weather events happening across the globe that continue to affect millions of lives and livelihoods. So they're pointing out that there's some serious stuff going on here with respect to people maintaining not only their livelihoods, but their lives. The impact has been tremendous, the impact of abrupt climate change. Also from the article, in the middle of the year when most countries imposed COVID-induced global lockdowns and either slowed or stopped industrial activity, there was a brief glimmer of hope for the environment as greenhouse gas emissions plummeted. What they fail to point out is that the aerosol masking effect also plummeted. We really got lucky because the timing was perfect for humans and for much of much life on Earth. As the greenhouse gases plummeted, the aerosol masking effect in, was, was decreased, the masking was decreased, and fortunately that occurred during the winter and then into the early spring with the first wave of the pandemic, and then in the third wave in the late fall. So that was fortunate. This, the story goes on. World Meteorological Organization report in November of this year, of 2020, said, quote, the lockdown has cut emissions of many pollutants and greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, but any impact on CO2 concentrations is in fact no bigger than the normal year-to-year -year fluctuations in the carbon cycle, which they point out they think is bad news, but actually is good news because what that means is there was not a profound enough decline in aerosol masking to drive a global average temperature rise sufficiently to cause our extinction, our loss of habitat, and then our near-term extinction. As a result of what this article calls bad news, but I think is good news in terms of habitat for humans, we're on course to reach pre-corona emissions levels, at least in the short term. I'm not saying this is good news by any stretch of the imagination. Emissions are horrible and continuing, but loss of aerosol masking has a much more abrupt impact and a much more negative impact in the short term. This year is also the second hottest on record after 2016. 2020 has witnessed extreme temperatures in the, in the Arctic, record-breaking wildfires in Australia, hurricanes in the Atlantic, including, for instance, the relentless back-to-back -back Category 4 hurricanes that pounded Central America in November of this year, and flooding in several parts of Southeast Asia and Africa, leading to the displacement of millions of people. Abrupt climate change is fully underway, in other words, and this is one of the few articles to actually acknowledge it. This article in the Indian Express is ahead of, the corp of most of the corporate media on this topic. And then we begin the hope, the unfounded hope. There were, however, some small wins, indeed small, to be had during the pandemic. Although just an ambition for now, just an ambition? You mean just wishful thinking for now? The European Union had put forward a Green New Deal earlier this year, well as regular watchers of this channel know, 
civilization is a heat engine, Green New Deal or not, maintaining this set of living arrangements by any means is bad news in terms of continuing to overheat the planet. This, this Green New Deal, coupled with the world's largest emitter, China's pledge that they'll aim to become carbon neutral by 2060, which I guarantee, by the way, because when there's no people on the planet, we'll be carbon neutral. There'll be no countries, there'll be no burning of fossil fuels. Uh, I can hardly call this good news because of the impact it has on all life on Earth. More good news, India's assurance of exceeding Paris Agreement goals, trust me, Every country that's about to become not a country is about to join India in this endeavor. And more crucially, and this is where it absolutely gets crazy, U.S. President-elect Joe Biden's Pledge for America, second largest emitter, to rejoin the Paris Climate Accord. These are developments that infuse hope in global climate dialogue. Hope indeed. Meanwhile, there are numerous severe events pointed out by this article that have occurred this year. Global rise in temperature? Absolutely. They point out that there's been a, <clears throat> a massively understated 1.2 degrees Celsius increase in global average temperature relative to the 1850 to 1900 baseline, which ignores the first 200 years of the Industrial Revolution. It also ignores, in pointing out that the temperature is up 1.2 degrees, they failed to point out that the United Nations Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases pointed out in October of 1990 that one degree was the absolute upper limit beyond which we would trigger self-reinforcing feedback loops. They failed to point out also David Spratt's presentation from October of 2014 where he points out that half a degree C was the upper limit at which we had already triggered those many self-reinforcing feedback loops. So <clears throat> all of this hopium seems to be a, middle, a little displaced to me. In any event, among the other severe events this year beyond global rise in temperatures was rise in ocean heat content. Again, the paper fails to point out that the that the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, an arm of the United Nations, pointed out that climate change is now irreversible due to those warming oceans. Irreversible. You don't see the word irreversible anywhere in this paper. Also, among the severe events pointed to is the melting of sea ice, which is tremendously important. And the Arctic has continued to warm twice as fast as the global average since the mid-1980s which is a, an absolutely tremendous uptick in heating that will not stay in the Arctic for long. So there you have it. Thanks for staying tuned. I was a little long-winded today. Sorry about that. In another week, we'll turn out another one of these science updates.